units that got most popular after the de uh, the nerf to D6 were Handlock and Quest power. Shaman, both of which I think the mage can prey upon pretty consistently. But we will jump into the mirror right now. The list just one card apart. We saw a while ago Tice running that uh, Blood Mage Thalnos, which I feel has kind of fallen out of fashion in this list um, yep. instead of that Spice Bread Baker. Yeah, it does feel like, especially this uh, uh, handlock at this moment in time, has a good amount of cards you can change, and it's not as if the cards you change are bad. It just really is about what you want the deck to do, you know, just tinkering it, as opposed to saying, well, this card's the worst card in the deck. I'm going to change it for a much better card. It's just different choices for different approaches here. And we, we'll see that in, in Grandmasters a little bit later on, because there's still some builds knocking around with uh, weapon inclusion as well, along with, uh, I think, double spice uh, baker in there as well for, for a couple of players or a player or two so we'll see how that pans out but as we dive into game number one of course Gia the specialist of mulligans uh, what, what are you looking for here uh, specifically in the mirror for handlock as well well, you love to see some backfires and, of course, Giants as well. I'm still undecided as to whether you're supposed to keep Giant that early on. It is super crucial, but it takes such a long time to get online, especially if you don't have support cards to keep damaging yourself like the backfire. So I don't mind the full mulls from both players here. I also want to highlight the difference of being on coin versus on play in the mirror because a lot of the time uh, you do get to be the first one to get the threats down with the coin because it's essentially two extra cards in hand, which means your Noel is a lot cheaper, your Anetheron is going to be a lot cheaper. Uh, I definitely think Anetheron is a keep in the matchup, and there it is for Bunny Hopper. This looks like a pretty simple tap, tap, tap in the early game. Yeah, and even the the great combo of when you get that Anetheron down, if it is one of your first two minions, you can often just raise dead into one mana Anetheron right again if it dies, right? Yeah. So if Tyus manages to clear that up on curve, then that's good. Obviously, you don't want to leave it on board, but if it's just played again, well, suddenly you need multiple sources of... If you're dealing six, which isn't that easy, right? There is only the odd card or two that can do it uh, in a reasonable fashion. Pickup for of tour guide from Tice is pretty nice just to fill out his curve for that turn, but the turn four looks a little bit awkward if he doesn't pick up at least backfire. He might end up floating a couple mana unless he wants to go double neophyte and making your hand that thin that early often feels bad if you feel the need to go for early gold shire nulls a little bit later on, but Tice doesn't quite have that option. As for Bunny, he can tap all the way up to 10 and just drop the first Anetheron, right? Oh, sorry, he's at eight right now, so only taps to nine, uh, but he can get Goldshire Noel down instead. I don't quite feel that's worth it. Yeah, I, I like this a lot. Coil just to move the coil and draw a new card because you're probably just going to draw something overall better uh, and get the tap in and just set up for that Anethra and it seems very, very powerful. Tice Ooh. now has the backfire and honestly, I think he really needed it because most of his hand are like the support tools, right? The Neil fight, the battle master for the wind turn, uh, the Baron Scavenger and the Bristleback are all for late, much later on in the game. And by much later on, I mean like maybe three turns or so. But still, uh, it's important that he actually has something to react to the board here. But he's now going to go for those double Neophytes and at least challenge something that Bunny Hop will play on the board right now. That's big tempo from Tice there. I was honestly a bit tempted to just let her rip with the backfire. Um, he started with tap, I thought, because he wanted to complete quest perfectly and then have the three damage from backfire for quest two. Uh, but instead going with the neophytes, maybe just to get those proactive threats, as you said, they do challenge a Netheron when played together. I don't think they're particularly locking out any spells that Bonnie really wants to play this turn. Hand already full, so you're not expecting to see backfire. Uh, but Tice also just freeing up hand space for his own backfire. But does he have to move away from that because of the Anetheron now? He has just drawn Bolt, though, so that looks pretty clean as well, right? He can just kill this board and then still backfire this turn. He misses out on tapping, which so, some of the, uh, the, the best players I've seen pilot this deck tap almost no matter what is going on right like they just want to just tap 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 like every single turn no matter what will take extra damage to do so and so on and they still go for it but this looks very clean to me Tice looks like he's not gonna go for the backfire though and kick it yeah, off with the coil instead yeah, I think he can fit in the tap here over the backfire, just goes for Unstable, which also preserves the Neophyte on board. Um, he could have gone for a backfire with Trade and then Unstable, but then I don't actually feel that he has the greatest way to spend his mana on the very next turn. 
Okay, so gonna trade and then backfire, get some more damage on himself, you'd have to imagine, which means that the quest goes to 5 out of 7, which means one more tap, and he's done with quest 2. And that means one more lifesteal effect, and by the time he gets giants, they should be pretty cheap by now. It's one thing I really like, and not only just about the deck, but this matchup is there is multiple ways to try and win the game. Uh, you know, like, there's players that just absolutely go crazy on drawing cards and try and get Tams in live whilst defending themselves, of course. There are players who focus on super early aggression, um, and sometimes it's out of your hands, of course. If your hand tells you to do something, you normally have to do it. Uh, but I think we can quite easily see here Bunny Hopper's become the aggro player and Tyus is on the back foot and, and playing defensive now and more value based. Yes. So strong that the raise that guaranteed gets another run here. He can top it, the turn off with a giant. It comes at the cost of not tapping this turn, but I think it's well worth it. You've just seen an unstable um, Shadow Bolt from Tyus and he doesn't really have that many great ways of dealing with a giant after using that one of copy. But Bunny Hopper is just gonna go for the tap instead, delay the giant by a little bit more. Uh, it means he's weaving in the neophyte this turn, I suppose. Yeah, I, I've seen this from a few players as well. The more I watch them uh, play Hamlock is if the giant uh, at least in this matchup, if the giant isn't cheap, they just won't play it if they have other options, right? They'll just make sure it gets cheaper. And like I said, just highly valuing those live taps. That is true. It's not that the giant was necessarily unkillable this turn. I just think it was less likely without the yeah. unstable uh, Shadow Blast because mm -hmm. we could have seen from Tice a combination of Soul Run, Dream Soul because the Neophyte wouldn't have been playable here. So right. money is just progressing the cheapening a bit for more while still demanding a response from Tice because he is just dead to Battlegrounds Battlemaster if everything sticks. Just a dynamic that Handlock always seems to create. And we could just see that because it looks like it's backfire plus touch here. So he goes up to 20 and then 23 with the quest proc. And that's just game. Yeah, <laughs> it looks yeah. like it, right? He just doesn't have many. I mean, like here he could play the null instead and just take off five instead of three. Does that ever save him in that scenario? But he doesn't get the healing. So yeah, that's it's right. Yeah, it doesn't. It's just yeah, it's just the same, isn't it? But you know, it's same outcome. And I, I think Tyus knows it. <laughs> yeah, against the BGVM outcome, it's just that simple for Bunny Hopper. Thirteen on board, wow. doubled up to twenty-six. Tyus at the drop of the hat, dead just like that. Another one has so much power in the matchup. It's essentially the first giant that comes down. Yeah. Still immune to soul rend, or rather survives a soul rend, and can get online so much quicker. And it's the sheer power of the fact it's relatively easy to make it cost one, right? It's what your deck wants to do, live tap, draw loads of cards. It's arguably even stronger than an early giant because when you if you raise dead it will be one so you can normally play something else alongside it whereas a lot of giants around in the early mid game are like four mana maybe five uh, so then you're still paying what four again three again so yeah it's just so strong to get that netheron down early and has just made up for the fact that the giants are that little bit slower and tight uh, he, he knew it this wasn't even Arguably a mistake at this point, right? He had to yeah. do what he could. He just sometimes you have to hope it's not there But he very clearly knew he was dead to this exact card and what a great way for Bunny Hopper to start the series This is the kind of game you want, right? If you're gonna play a mirror, you want something just almost a paint by numbers basic I put all the pressure on suddenly, you know, my opponent can't deal with it. Boom dead the next game I don't even know if there was any Derek dynamic involved with that because Tice wasn't particularly trying too hard to play for tempo or for card draw. Every turn he fit in a tap, um, except for that one Neophyte turn, I suppose, where it still kind of made sense to dump the hand because he was trying to maneuver a backfire the next right. turn. But Bunny Hopper being on coin, not even really needing the backfire to fill his hand, uh, it was just too perfect with the Anetheron. And that sometimes is how the cookie crumbles. But he is going to move on to the Quest Shaman now, which if Tice is staying on the hand, Handlock is a pretty decent matchup for the Handlock, but I think we have sort of agreed in our testing, and I've heard you and Sottle say on broadcast also that the matchup is somewhat closer now because of the nerf to Flesh Giant. Yeah, I would agree with that definitely, but 
Tice is not sticking on the Warlock by the looks of things. I think he is moving over to his Rogue. So these are uh, two decks I know you like a lot at the moment, Gia. How does the matchup go for that, the, the Quest Shaman versus the Rogue? Because right now, those are two very popular decks in the metagame. It's highly contested. I do think the Rogue is favored, not by that much. Uh, but as Rogue, I would generally be happy to run into Shaman because the only real big pressure that the Shaman can get that puts the Rogue off of their general game plan of accrue cards, discount them, and then get more cards with field contact is if they get those super fast bloom starts. If the start is the regular, like, um, play your quest into coin three drop into Feral Spirit, that's, I think, fast enough that the Rogue doesn't mind taking 6 or even 12 damage in the early game. Uh, but if they go for the Note Taker Bloom Bloom, have a Clanal Slogger on turn 2, that can be a little bit too much to deal with, especially since that 4 health breakpoint is too much for Brain Freeze to deal with. Right, so it's really going to be... The onus feels like, as it often does when you're against Rogue, uh, very much on Bunny Hopper here to pile on pressure and, and give Tice as many headaches as possible, because the more I face Rogue on ladder, uh, one the more convinced of how pretty difficult the deck is because some players look like they don't know what they're doing. But when you face a good player, you, it, it, for some reason, even though I know, it continues to surprise me how fast they can kill you, right, in terms of just game yeah. time. Like, you, you look at your turn six, seven, you're like, okay, well, you know, I'm setting up. This is, game's going to be over. Oh, wait, I'm already dead to the Garrotts. They, like, they, they just pop off and it's game over. So uh, time is of the essence here, I think, for Bunny Hopper. And I'll be very surprised if we see any kind of, you know, Brakan value plays coming into uh, this specific matchup. Yeah, I completely agree. I don't appreciate you calling me out like that. I've thrown many a Garot Rogue game on ladder, and I'm sure I've looked stupid to my opponents. Uh, but, but there is a steep learning curve with this deck that really takes some experience, I would say, before yeah. you can both recognize when you're playing against it around what time you are dead, and also know um, the fastest way to approach your quest and how much you need to delay to deal with the board. Interesting full keep from Bunny Hopper there. One of the rare charge call kept in the opening hand uh, mulligans there. I think Bunny Hopper is completely committing to playing a charge call to either 4 mana, 5 mana. That's absolutely right. one of the best ways to get um, pressure in the early game. Uh, but Neophyte on curve, whether the Shaman is going first or second, is eternally powerful because they always want to do something with 3 mana. Yeah, this is definitely strong, but I guess luckily for Bunny Hopper, he has the choice of just using this investment here. Uh, it's still playable, of course, doesn't have to worry too much. Gets him another overload card, and now he has a lot of options as to where he wants to what what he wants to throw around with this Bloom next turn. I mean, it's like Bloom Coin Feral Feral for the perfect six mana. That's look that looks nice. Maybe he Serpent Shines the Neophyte instead of Second Feral. Uh, we'll see. But for Tice here, he kept the Swindle in the opener, which I think is a similar school of thought to keeping Shroud in the opener. It's somewhat slow. Um, to keep a spell, but it also has synergy with Foxy Fraud, keeps the resources going. He decides to step Neophyte, which is one of the rarer step targets in the matchup, but I think it makes tons of sense versus Shaman, right. uh, especially since he didn't have a particularly good way of procking the Swindle combo. Mm. Game strike, wow. He's kind of thinking Shooting Star because he has spell damage, but then again, two damage AoE, not super strong against Shaman. It's not till you hit the three damage break point where their board really gets swept up, right? But I'm concerned as to at what point the Flame Strike can come down, especially since Tice is only running one preparation. Yeah, do you, do you think Tice is just playing like this too because he's a little bit afraid of what his hand, well, doesn't do at this point? He hasn't got hold of a field contact yet. Uh, he hasn't got Shroud yet either to be able to just try and dig for the field contact. So it looks like he's taking a more sort of slower approach because he mainly has to, although Secret Passage could change that dramatically right now. But he also has the ability to fight back a little bit more than some lists against Shaman because he has that broom. Right, like which is a big deal. Not all decks, are, not all forms of this rogue are playing that. He does find Trout though. Yeah, that is excellent timing oh. for the Secret Passage. Even though he only gets to play one card off of it, it is netting him two cards into the hand and minus one card in the deck. And thinning the deck is the name of the game on this Garot Rogue when you're not really able to um, rely on damage permanence in this matchup as the Shaman does have a bit of healing with the Canal Sloggers. Uh, still, not the, no field contact in this 
post passage hand, but there's an octobot. So if the field contact comes in the next two draws, then Tice is big chillin. Uh, but for now, Bunny Hopper, I think he's been waiting since turn two to really go off, but now the access to double ferals is very much real. Yeah, this is the turn, right? As you said, he could have done this earlier if it wasn't for those pesky neophytes. Kind of prefer getting another set of two threes rather than a random three drop, which also removes one thief. Um, no matter which of those spells he plays uh, alongside the Lightning Bloom, the unlock will be active. So he actually has access to the very next turn, coin whichever of those three costs overload spells he didn't play, plus charge call, which is right. an insanely strong curve. Yeah, it's about as much power as you're ever going to put on the board this early in the game against Rogue, and that's exactly what he needs to do, right? Uh, Ty's probably looking at this and thinking, oh no, uh, and, uh, and hoping against hope that he can get to this flame strike in time before it's too late. And that's a pretty good draw, though, because now he can go Octobot and then Swindle, and then proc the Octobot probably with the Pen Flinger, I suppose. Mm -hmm. And hopefully this draws him a field contact, otherwise he's in big trouble. Uh, I mean, he procs it, but if he doesn't pick up Octobot off the top next turn, I am very worried for Tice. Does he have any other options here he's already used a shadow step so i imagine tice will be looking to hold the second one for an extra spell damage yeah it or even not for spell damage maybe to go with this prize plunderer next turn so it can sure for defense yeah couple more things goes with the off merchant instead trying to be a little bit less leak weak to um perpetual flame but I don't even think Bunny needs to flame here. He can just go Coin Serpent, try and get the charge call for a 5-drop. That's really strong. He's just thinking, it's probably a field contact in hand, so how do I build the most resilient board? Um, he doesn't really have access to giving Divine Shields of his own, though, so I'd be inclined to go for max stats, high health on the 5-drop if right. possible, and just have things survive here and there versus the contact. And anyway, he's sitting on Perpetual Flame in hand uh, to make sure that he can clear the board on the other side. Yeah, I'm wondering if there's ever a world that he doesn't charge call this turn, but I guess he just has to, right? It just feels a little bit too slow. Didn't know whether he was going to go for Zapper and then and draw, maybe. Wait, I've never seen a Kel'Thuzad Perpetual Flame interaction. Does that work the, the way I think I it does? I haven't seen it, but I would hope so. The the one spell, like, <laughs> does kill things, right? Like, is that not uh, fair? Okay. I, I think it would. I think it would just summon him an entire board, but he goes with the Burning Blade Acolyte. Fine. It takes a while for it to be a bit more threatening, but I guess it's stickier. Less fun, though. True. Okay. Chance for contact with the Shroud Ooh. of Concealment, but... He's going to ping a Flame Strike, right? This is nice. Yeah. That is super clean. The discount on the flame strike is enormous. And Bunny's just like, oh, that's annoying. <laughs> and yeah, Ty's been rewarded, right? We sort of question the very early pickup of, uh, you know, a seven cost spell effectively, yeah. right? You know, as as this Garot Rogue seems crazy, but it did pay off. And Ty's kind of weirdly rewarded for not having field contact yet. So he could actually <laughs> just use the flame strike. And that's not a good thing, of course, but he did give himself some kind of buffer, right? If he got a bit unlucky with the draws, he had that effective board clear there. I mean, it's insane. He's bought himself not just one turn by clearing the board, possibly two or even three turns before he even has to feel pressured again because the Shaman game plan in this matchup is to go all in on the first couple boards they can possibly get uh, just because the Rogue struggles to actually deal with that many minions. Yes, they can go Prize Plunder, but only step it a maximum of two times. Bunny Hopper had nearly the full board there and it got entirely decimated. So now Tice has so much time to go for the Shroud of Concealment. Bunny Hopper pretty much back to the drawing board. Only six points worth of threatage in play right now. Uh, but he does have access to relatively early Brukan with a uh, Flame Guidance Brukan next turn. Yeah, it's, uh, it's you know, Bunny's not out just because that Flame Strike, but definitely a few steps behind. That's some pretty decent card draw. Doesn't hit the field contact again. 
which has got to be, with 11 cards left in the deck, it's got to be frustrating at this point to still not have one. But I guess when he does get it, he will be able to draw his whole deck, almost no questions asked. Almost. Ooh, especially if he plays a flow, but I wonder if Tice is going to commit to accruing even more removal resources here, because we know that as soon as he gets field contact, he pops all the way off. But does he have time while waiting for it to actually survive? Uh, Brukana possibility next turn. Looks like he's going to trade the fire sail back. No Kazakas in the deck, so I'm not worried about any uh, disruption with that interaction. Look at the shake of the head. Tice is like, field contacts are in the deck, right? Like, they are in there somewhere. 10 cards left, or 11, should I say. Still struggling. We're still stuck in the secret passage, it feels like. Yeah. Right, Splendor to get, of the four, get rid of the 4-3 would also help um, trade away the Zapper, which I think is of great importance because even your stealth Octobot is not safe against Perpetual Flame when there's spell damage on the board. Could still be a pretty big turn here with this uh, this Totemic Reflection and then just go for the Perpetual Flame. It does so sort of strength the Note Taker, but I, wonder. I think Bunny Upper just needs to try and build a board again and hope there's no more AoE removal knocking about. Although he knows that there's the uh, the AoE in the deck now from the um, uh, from the Mage spell he had. Do you think this is a Guidance turn? I'm just not sure if he's meant to yeah. copy it with the Note Taker, but uh, starting Guidance here, if you are very lucky, you roll the uh, Primordial Studies and then get the Zapper and then the Perpetual Flame doesn't proc the Octobot. Uh, but it's still a pretty balanced approach, I would say, because Bunny Hopper did need a couple more spells to really get the value with Brucon because if he had to spend every Overload card to just get Brukan in the first place, then Brukan itself is not that big of a threat in the immediacy. Okay. So, oh, overload for Bunny Hopper plus the Guidance, so he's able to play Brukan next turn as long as he doesn't overload anymore. Ties still. Uh, no field contact. What? This no, is what happens to me on ladder when I. <laughs> yeah. It happens to me on ladder when I try this deck, I have one game like this, I'm like, I'm done. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to something else. I mean, every deck has this something of a dynamic, like you can yeah. play Handlock and never hit Flesh Giants, I suppose. Uh, but with the Rogue in particular, um, you run so much card draw that it truly does feel unlucky for yeah. it to be turn 8 and the only field contacts he's seen were stuck in the secret passages, both of them in the bottom 10 of his deck. So Tice knows Brukan is coming next turn. I wonder if he's ever meant to just try and play more stuff on the board instead? Last Shadow Step expended on the Octobot instead, which means that he's all in on top deck contact next turn and win the game all at once. Much. Yeah, which which is doable <laughs> at this yeah. point. I think that's very important to remember for people, I guess, who might not be overly familiar with this rogue. But that is very much doable if he gets the field contact. The rest of his hand costs more or less nothing, so his cycle will be pretty extreme if he can get those groats off as well. And if it isn't win the game, he doesn't even have a good way of removing the Brukan. He can freeze it, but... I mean, there's just double lightning bolt and serpent shrine for bunny. Uh, sorry, one oh. lightning bolt and serpent shrine in hand. Prep is probably one of the worst ones for Tice. Oh my gosh, she didn't even get the other secret passage. So, yeah, th this is is infuriating for Tice, no doubt. But he has brain freeze, so he, f he will feel significantly safer, right? He isn't going to take seven plus whatever the you know whatever the heck bunny hop is going to throw at him with the brakan effect next turn at least he can stop that seven and i would probably say at this point tice has exactly one more turn left in this game on average yeah i'd agree after this one from bunny hopper it's unlikely that tice gets to live unless he just wins the game with the contact off the top right now bunny hopper with 12 burst in hand he can actually get lethal depending on what this guidance gives it's four cards and i mean we haven't even seen a fire heart yet charged call available oh. if bunny is uh not feeling super lucky with the guidance he can just load up the board instead and guarantee the lethal for next turn 
as Vivid. Fantastic in these situations. I do wonder Ooh. if against exactly Rogue, whether Vivid is even needed. <laughs> but still, it's good pickup. Yeah. If this investment gets the other Serpent Shrine and yep. a Bolt... Oh! Okay, it's only 18. It was close, though. Yeah, he would have needed Bloom as well, though, right? Ah, true. Yeah, not enough. Yeah, for Serpent, Serpent, Ball, Ball. Yeah, still, no, the heal's going to come in pretty clutch as well. He's seen the yeah, two Shadow Steps. Let's remove a couple breakpoints, and he's just going to load up with the Scrapyard or Deathwing here. Doesn't really matter. Any decent board is enough to kill Tice here, but the passage first oh. is a disaster. Even if he gets the field contact, there's no discounted cards to play with it. It's just impossible, I think. Oh, wait, wait, wait. So if you start Octobot, prep passage, you get contact, Garot Garot, prize plunder. Oh, I'm getting inspiration. Uh, well, he would, it's something like that. <laughs> he would have to Octobot Og Merchant first, right? And then you have to passage. Octobot and then and then Passage, because you're not really discounting anything with this Passage. Like, you have to uh, discount the hand post-Passage, I think. Well, yeah, I was just thinking it's more for the for the spell damage what as well that you could need, so... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The Ethereal. Yeah. But then you can't discount the hand afterwards, so yeah, you can't play anything. <laughs> it's a nightmare, isn't it? We, we're trying to make up silly things that can make a difference when really... I do don't think they will. There's the Concede from Tyson. I think Tice is planning that game, and the way he approached with the, the hands that he had was fine, but if the deck doesn't draw the, the key card, then it's, it's going to be a bit of a problem. And Bunny Hopper again, although there's always a fair factor every turn of the game against Rogue, had a pretty smooth win there. He had the big clear from the Flame Strike he had to deal with, but other than that, felt pretty confident. And now he's only got Demon Hunter to get one win against Tice's whole lineup at this point. Yeah, that certainly feels doable, even though the Fell Demon Hunter versus Handlock doesn't feel like the greatest. Same with the Druid, and I do also think that Rogue gets to their combo a little bit faster on average, but given three chances, I think Bunny Hopper should be in a fine spot. Right. I just want to reiterate that this game from Tice was really well played in terms of what he was given. Like, um, yeah. taking the flame strike off of the one feet, I did not have the foresight to see how good that would be, but it absolutely bought him two or three more turns. It's just that his deck didn't really reward him with the card he wanted to draw in those two or three extra turns. Yeah, really unfortunate, but solid play from Tice. Uh, Bunny Hopper is going to be moving over to his Fell Demon Hunter, the only deck he has left now to get a victory with, and he is running that Zai the Incredible uh, with the general plan to double up on Jace Darkweaver uh, to be able to just, you know, chain Jaces into your opponent for lethal in almost you know every circumstance uh, there are some other options obviously as the game will play out we've uh, you know we were testing this a little bit and Zai can gain you some uh, some nice just additional tools as well to sort of beef up the Jace in the first place uh, but yeah generally Zai is there just to get that double Jace but at the cost of Ilganoth and honestly for me Gia I still can't decide whether it's a cost that I'm I'm okay paying in Fell Demon Hunter. I just I played both. I played the Ilganoth one a lot. I played the Zai one a bit and I just can't decide if it's worth it. Yeah, it's really close. I think that the Zai affords you more consistency with the healing because just being able to go double Jace is one more pretty much board complete wipe on the other side and you can heal up from wherever you are at all the way to 30 a lot of the time. Uh, but the lack of Ilganoth means that you're giving up a lot of your potential reach because as we saw in APAC at least, there is the definite possibility of winning the game off the back of the old Ilganoth combos if you're lucky enough to discount any of the combo pieces with Sigil or with Skull. Um, right. So I think for what Bunny Hopper is trying to do with his lineup in particular, which is be good against aggro, um, I think the Shaman, the Handlock, and the Fell Demon Hunter do that pretty consistently. I kind of like the double J. I mean, I'm already just calling Zaya a second Jace. It doesn't have to be. In the ideal world, it is. Um, but it can also just copy you further card draw. It can copy you other heal spells. And that can be enough um, versus aggressive decks, but maybe not so great versus Tice's slightly more combo oriented lineup. Yeah, now just checking now, Tice is going to be queuing his Warlock first, going up against this Demon Hunter. And a, a pretty tricky matchup because this Fell Demon Hunter, although. Uh, 
is generally, I think, fairly accepted as a sort of anti-aggro deck, and Warlock it can be aggro, but with massive minions. Uh, there are tools in the deck to not only clear wide boards uh, and big boards, but also play fairly aggressive themselves, right? Just with the sheer amount of damage you can push early on, the options of getting Fell Barrage down uh, for a lot of damage just to face if the board's empty. You see the Fury there in Bunny Hopper's opening hand, so there is a chance that Bunny Hopper can just play aggressive and try and just steal the game away from Tice here, but I think generally Tice should be feeling pretty comfortable in this one. I agree. I think the size of Tice's threats, uh, the Flesh Giants and the Anetheron, especially with the two um, raised duds, is generally more than the Fell Demon Hunter can get through by the point in the game that that many threats have come down. Because the Fell Demon Hunter, while there is a healthy amount of card draw, can run a little bit dry towards the end if they don't hit the Jace. Uh, Bunny Hopper keeping the skull, I absolutely am on board oh. with. He's got Zai now, so he's got potential double skull because the way Zai works is it copies the left card to the left. So both of them will be outcastable. Um, the Fury kept, I'm not sure if it's for the damage or mainly just to be a card that is guaranteed not going to be blocking the skull. Yeah, I, I like it a lot. Just throw Fury away at whatever opportunity you can before the skull turn. The second he throws the Fury away and gets something awkward, he might have just just ruined his whole game plan here and one thing I, I always have to remind myself about Zai is that it itself is clearly not an outcast card. I always just <laughs> assume anything with a strong effect in Demon Hunter is outcast. Uh, so yeah, I was just highlight, highlight it there for you guys so you know that it doesn't matter where Zai is, you play it and it copies the, you know, the, the end cards. Thank you for that. Uh, spectral, but I don't think he's going to play it. I think he banks this mana discount for the skull. Um, for that reason, he could consider Sigil Runner as well if he just wants to have a bit more flexibility in the post double skull world because this curve is really shaping out to like Zai into skull into skull, right? Maybe he doesn't need any more card draw after that. <laughs> Yeah, it's pretty interesting though, right? Because if that's his plan, then he won't need to bank the discount for the skull. Ooh. So maybe he should take Spectral. The only time I really uh, have had felt terrible playing Fell Demon Hunter is when you have the games where you just don't hit your card draw. So I actually quite like this because if he's playing Zai anyway, or planning to at least, then he plays that on turn five and then skull on six, skull on seven. So I actually like this a lot. Just keep the hand total high and keep the options open here for Bunny Hopper. Yeah, makes a lot of sense to lay it out like that. But for Tice, Backfire has entered the hand. It's not generally a card you want to coin out because there are not that many uh, mm. three-cost cards you would want to follow up the curve with. But Tice is planning out the hand space, right? If he taps up to seven here, he'll draw to eight the next turn. Then Backfire will put him to ten, and he'd have to eventually dump coin anyway. Um, ideally, you get another on somewhere in that equation. Right. So the mana works out perfectly. Uh, but he's just going to start with the coin Backfire here. Picks up Tour Guide, so that makes his next turn a, a lot cleaner. For Bunny, this feels like just an Eldraki equip. With both the weapons, you can already consider starting to swing and get the health total down, but I don't quite feel it's worth it to swing just yet versus Handlock. Uh, the healing can be relevant here and there, but I honestly feel that the Handlock's health total is a lot more precarious, and they need to play around more breakpoints than the Demon Hunter has to versus the Handlock. Right. Yeah, one argument, I guess, for equipping and not swinging as well would be with double Fury, he can just take down a giant suit with that one swing, right? So maybe holding the Aldraki, getting it equipped. There's no snake for, for him to fear. Tyus isn't running weapon removal in his list, so he doesn't have to worry about that. As soon as he equips the weapon, it's equipped until Bunny Hopper chooses otherwise. So I think I like him just spending his mana here and waiting. I also don't think that like hero powering and pushing one and passing really achieves anything in the game. He is choosing to swing though, putting a little bit of pressure on Tyus. Interesting. Maybe he's just planning on re-equip the next turn because because he is gearing up for the double skull game plan, it looks right. like, which means he really needs to keep the hand total um, in check in the near future. And also, um, because the curve is shaping what up is to be turn so five Zai into turn six skull, he actually needs to play the flurry on the left, uh, the fury on the left this turn. And so maybe if that's just going face, uh, because Giant's not likely to come down this early. Um, then he just wants to get some of that swinging damage through anyway. Right. 
You know, a little bit of a frustrating turn there. Ty's choosing to put a bit of pressure on here, or at least some disruption, I think, is more of a fair way to say that, because he could have done the old, like, tap tour guide in that order, so then he has a tap again uh, freely next turn. But choosing to value the Neophyte and just make the turn just a little bit more awkward. As you mentioned, he, uh, Bunny Hopper now can't play Fiori and equip the Eldraki Warblade, so it looks like he's taking it a little bit slower. Yeah, that means that the Zaya is not necessarily being played next turn, or it can just copy a Fury. Uh, I don't know if that's ideal for Bunny, but um, the turn I think is respecting the possibility of another honor giant this turn. Uh, Tice doesn't quite have it, but the Gold Shard Null is a decent consolation prize. I think fitting in the top last turn for Tice um, before the tour guide, uh, sorry, after the tour guide effect comes down is because Tice was expecting to tap a Neophyte again. Right. Uh, but with the pickup of the Gold Shard Null, the curve is the same, but with a higher threat minion. Oh! Okay, I think this is worth, <laughs> personally, yes. just Me play too. it. An extra Fury means not only like three Furies normally, mm -hmm. but three more in the two Jaces you have as well, right? Oh, sorry, one more in the, in the new Jace you have as well. So this looks fine. Don't worry about the skull. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the whole point bit by uh, of like copying skull is so you can get to jace more consistently right. i think but you have the jace so let's copy that um the other downside i suppose of copying like this right now is that um the skull has no more chance of discounting jace so you can't necessarily get an otk with the jace but it's getting very close because like you said there's an extra fury in the pool now it just depends how long bunny waits before he plays um one of them or two of them yeah i'm i'm even just looking at what the turns look like if bunny hopper just plays like triple fury right before the jace turn and then jace yeah. and then jace like that is a lot of damage swing after swing and outside uh -huh. of the baron scavengers there's not there's no taunts right there's nothing that ties can really stop the swings coming through outside of those exact minions Maybe Muzzy was right all along. He's basically playing Soul Demon Hunter here. Yeah. These are like Marrow Slicers, Lapidaries turn after turn. And um, but the question mark is, is the Fury, are the Furies enough to get there on their own right now? Because Bunny, I don't think, has played any other Fell spells. No Barrages yet, right. no Immolation, or uh, just a Spectral Sight. So um, he can load up the Furies, but the Jace might not be on Curve. Yeah, he has like 11 damage next turn, right? Well, 12 with Hero Power. Like... <laughs> Just put ties to eight and say, let's go. Realistically, he'll want to do that on turn seven, right? To, to right, lay straight yeah. into Jays, but it's still just funny to me, at least. <laughs> it is. It really is. And it could just be at least two Furies now to at least unlock the skull on the left for the next turn. Right. Uh, this will be note both Neophytes he's seen now. Of course, they can come back via raised dead, but if it's not both, then the skull can be played the very next turn. I mean, even though it's three I spells I'm looking at patient. on a Neophyte turn, I think it's pretty clean. The Sigil also fitting in with the Double Fury turn. Yeah, and then, uh, as you said, that sets up Skull Fury the turn after, then obviously Jace or Review after the Skull and so on. This looks very good, and the best thing as well, I think, for Bunny Hopper is Tice is still five, I guess four by next turn, draw uh, cards away from activating Bristleback, so the actual options for Tice to heal any relevant damage are, you know, as limited as they're going to be in this specific game. Yeah. Fair enough. Although Tice does have access to the 10 cards by next turn just by going backfire tap because he gets sure. the one natural draw. Uh, I think he might overdraw by that point, but it's probably worth just to get the sixes, sixes rolling, uh, if not Flesh Giant. This has to go face, right? I don't know if I'll be friends with Bunny Hopper after this. Oh, oh minion! Okay. 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 But it is respectful of the possibility of Battlegrounds Battlemaster being lethal over two turns if he leaves up a minion on board. I mean, it'll be lethal turn seven then. Now, Eight. this is the t the moment Ugh. Ice could put some pressure on right now because he's just seen a big swing. He knows two Furies are gone. He knows one of them was copied, of course, so he knows that there's another Fury left naturally in the deck at least. But, most importantly, as we can see, if Bunny Hopper's playing to Skull, 
like there isn't great answers to just a big board from Tice if you can play a giant and then threaten Leafa yeah. with a Battlemaster. I know he doesn't have Battlemaster at the moment, but just in general. Yeah, you always threaten it as handlock. It's always there because you draw so much like yeah. your opponent will have it on the mind, be it one copy only or not. Uh, Ty's just deciding how to spend the last couple of mana because he can fit in touches if he wants younger. to make the giant even cheaper or I guess coil neophyte giant. Um, that means that tap into Baron's scavenger is available next turn. Right. Yeah, and I, I was initially looking at touch myself, but I think that their ties just going for the draw is, is important because of the fact you pointed out, right? Just getting that Barrow Scavenger out as easily as possible. It'll activate the Bristleback as well. And again, now, <laughs> Bunny Hop is just limited with the mana with the skull. So if the skull is perfect and gives him Immolation or a talented Arcanist, he can clear the full board, including swing into I Giant. Uh, oh, maybe not that likely of it happening, war. but I don't really see any other plays that are good enough because he can't kill the Giant. Otherwise, there's right. Immo and Fell Scream. Well, he can isolate the Giant at least, which means he's not dead to BGBM. Yeah, I mean, that's the... Honestly the best realistic outcome you can hope for, right, is just leave the giant on the board this turn. Winfury won't mm. stack up that much. Should he should he blast Fell Screen Blast first? Is there ever a reason to? I don't think so. What, what, what quest progression is Tyson? Is he on Tamsin at this point? I don't think so, but whether or not he is, like, he only has one mana even if he plays BG BGBM. Oh, sure. he has on Tamsin as well. So, like, it would have yeah, to Yeah, that's be... safer, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. But anyway, even if it's not the immediate lethal, it is tons of threats right now. Another on Baron Scavenger, and he has the BGBM in hand right now. Um, it's just a question as to whether this last two mana is allocated to tapping or just held you elsewhere. Uh, Even half interest. Per... Oh, go on. Sorry, I was going to try and count up how much damage this Jace does at the moment. Um, and honestly, it's just the two Furies and the Immolation Aura, I believe. I think that's true. Yeah, he can play the Fell Screen Blast <laughs> first and then get effectively two Fell Screen Blasts this turn. So he can add that, which looks like a good idea right now. But... Maybe it picks Morg, Fell Scream instead, because if he can't kill Tice, yeah. then he needs to heal out of range or clear the board. And with two Fell Scream Blasts in hand right now, obviously he doesn't need to use both. Like one Morg, one Talented, and Fell Scream nicely deals with this perfect board of six health minions. Uh, and then he can fit in the mm. Metamorphosis as well and a ping as long as he uses the zero cost immolation uh, Fell Scream Blast. Yeah, I was looking at the Fell Gorge as well because he can get Barrage, which can help. Hmm. The legendary barrage, I've yep. heard it. <laughs> I mean, I'm not British, so even garage sounds funny to me. I say garage um, and barrage. <laughs> well, you can go and talk with Saul and Derek and Co. Then. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, the sets up super nice. nice for Bunny. It doesn't weave in the meta, but I think spending that four mana to or five mana even to get four damage pales in comparison to what he's done now, which is put an extra threat on the board, possibly get the Fel Barrage to face, which I think would be top of my priority list right now. Get it in the Jace pool. Does he ever Fel Screen Blast his own minions at this point? Wouldn't kill though. It leaves. I see your point. Like leaving a Moorg is very scary into Tamsin, yeah. but it wouldn't actually kill his Moorg. So I prefer the yeah. uh, the hold there. But for Tice here, this has to be a Giga Tamsin turn. More bones Each Jane Soul healing him for six. <laughs> Disgusting. Oh, it's so much health, isn't it? The touches, not healing for eight, but they deal for a piece. <laughs> Yeah, I think it's just drain, 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 right? Could even just finish on the last drain on his own minion, right? If he really wanted to go absolute maximum health. Yeah. Uh, 
don't think he needs to necessarily. Again, Jace count on three Furies, Immolation, so or a Fell Scream Blast. Right. That's my count. So three Furies all on rank two, I believe. Just nine points of burst, not that much. Oh, it's so much health. <laughs> the giant down as well. The drawback of leaving a Moarg on board. Bunny knew the risk, was just hoping the Tamsin wasn't there, but it's not as though he is out of the game just yet. Oh, uh, okay. Jace doesn't have to happen this turn. And that's a lot it? of additional spells, right? Like, that's a mm -hmm. beefing up the Jace is pretty reasonably there. So if it's not Jace this turn, it's clear the board with Fell Scream, I Beam, uh, Immolation Aura. It's a little bit awkward, right, with the three health on the Null. You can I Beam the Null. If you I Beam the Null. Barry. Oh, then you have to Hero Power? Too? Yeah. If you I Beam the Null, Fel Barrage, and Meta Ping, you do also have to use your normal Hero Power to get rid of the Giant. So I think he's not going to save the Immo. Just go for Fel Barrage I Beam this way instead. Right. Very clean. Oh, going Jace now. Never mind. I mean, that still does the job, right? To be fair, like that, that will kill the Giant. And he gets to push damage. And he gets to 7-5 potentially on board. And he gets to swing. So, yeah, tick a lot of boxes, honestly. Quite good. I don't know if he did the exact math that the Jace always lives here. Oh, doesn't. Okay. Well, if he did, he got it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That Jace is very dead. But honestly, it leaving the board is not the, bad, uh, not the worst thing for Bunny. No targets or at least convenient targets for the Blood right. Shard Bristleback or the Touch of the Nathrism. And um, my only concern for going Jace that turn is that Meta is not in the pool for the first one. But realistically, what Meta doesn't actually so deal long. any immediate damage on the Jace turn unless you're also able to fit in the hero power. And it kind of means if you're milking that damage every turn that you don't chain the Jaces. Right? You only get right. additional 4 damage off each meta, so I think it's worth it for Bunny Hopper to go a bit faster, lose maximum damage, so that he gets more damage in a smaller window. I think with this outcome, though, of what Tice is doing, it might be worthwhile to actually, even if he went like meta next turn and just took that one turn off because the heals happened, because then on turn 10, he'll get to use the second meta face, then the Jace will refresh the meta, yeah, and then he can use it again to push 8, like you said, so... I think now it might be a, a really good idea to try and to try and switch away from the back-to-back uh, -back Jace plan. Yeah. Um, he's also got the Jace juiced that it can deal with more than just this 3-3 three, three, and 6-6, six, six, right? Especially with the additional I-beam that'll be in the pool. So I think it's fine for Bunny to go I-beam, meta, ping, face. Um, wait for Tice to develop a little bit more and then Jace into that. And I don't know if it'll be immediate lethal, probably not. But it's a lot. Oh. Uh, I don't see a way to make this go face without the meta not going face. <laughs> yeah, I think he can just meta the minion. Meta the 6-6 six, six, I beam and then his barrage splits does 2 to face. You just have to be okay with that, I guess. Yeah, I think that sounds very reasonable. So Fortunate next. the order that he has to yeah. I beam first, <laughs> but the mana works out anyway. Yeah. The only thing I guess it loses him is one attack with the f initial hero power if he had it spare, right? Could have loaded up the normal hero power first. Yeah. Keeping the board narrow also makes it a bit more likely for Jace to have those two fell barrages in the pool to go face because the order, again, not controllable, but if there are no minions to begin with, then yes, the fell barrages will always go face. Hmm. Talked a lot about what Bunny's options are, but now Tice's aren't exactly great, right? He has... Yeah, he's missing out on any kind of raise dead option right now. That is one of his two cards, so he'll be looking for that right now off this tap. And he'd right. love to get the Baron Scavenger, I'd imagine, off the raise dead. I don't even know if a taunt truly protects him at this moment, but he really needs to heal because currently this Jace has two Fel Barrages, three Furies, and a Metamorphosis, and there's going to be two pings available, so it's eight plus uh, the three Furies, nine. I don't even think Bunny needs... Okay, with this healing, he needs one of the Fel Barrages to go face, if I've not miscounted. 
With the Drain Soul, he'll need everything to go face. Yeah, I even wondered whether Tice would have gone a different way there and actually did touch on the 1 1, bristle backed the Tams in, and mm, then like touched touch again <laughs> and just go max health because Demon Hunter, th there's no other way to win at this point. Bunny Hopper, uh, Tice will know what he's got left. He's almost, well, he's certainly now got a second Jace, which he can add up what damage yeah. is available in a lot of circumstances. And then he has a couple of Chaos Strikes left. Um, like Thanos, which doesn't really do anything, a skull, which arguably doesn't do anything. He has to be, I guess, half scared of vanilla Dari studies. But outside of that, like Bunny Hopper with the cards he has, has left will just fatigue himself at that point. So I think Ty's going all... max healing was an option. Yeah. It was, but there's also, I guess, the other eight damage from the new meta that we have to consider. Sure. I guess it becomes four with this ping, but if I've done my math right, uh, this Jace is not lethal yet, unless perfect order and all the fell barrages go face. Well, that's not the right order. Yeah. <laughs> Last one's an eye beam soon. Okay. Yeah, okay, so one barrage will go face. Yeah. So it's like, it's like, seventeen <laughs> with the new one pain. off. Yeah, one off. Oh my Whoa. goodness. It literally had to be both the Fel Barrages going face. Or even half of one, right? Half of one of them, like the extra two damage yeah. would have been enough. And Tice... But currently, Tice doesn't have a guaranteed touch target. Oh, oh that's that's one. So he's alive to meta. No, 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 he's dead to meta and normal hero power. Can he... Oh. I think Bunny gets there. Yeah, he can't <laughs> do it, right? Yeah. And this one... This was kind of my question about like obviously would have took more damage from the from the uh, the fell barrage of course uh, dependent on order, uh, but I, I was just wondering if there was any other way for Ties to pull out any extra healing on the previous turn and it might not have mattered in the end of course but it, it, this game is so so close. Yeah, the previous turn if he could have fit in one more touch guaranteed. Then yes, but I think maybe a turn we can look back on is Tamsin one, as Sodal calls it, the one three Tamsin I mean, yeah. could could he have gotten more of the copy effects from it because that increases his total healing capability. Right. <laughs> Bunny here able to clutch it out with one fell barrage going face, hero power second half of the metamorphosis and the good old demon claws to close it out for the perfect three O sweep. What a series! Oh. Yeah, really nice series there, and you know it looked very one-sided, and to an extent, you know, one and a half of the games I guess were. But I think Bunny Hopper, especially in that last game with the Fell Demon Hunter, really kept his cool because Tice healed for a lot that game. He just went all the way back up almost to full health a couple of times. So there's a ton of health, and when Bunny Hopper didn't even have the best Jaces, right? Like he still had two Chaos Strikes in the deck. And normally if you do that a little bit earlier, one, you're drawing more cards anyway, and also just pushes extra weapon damage. So he got locked out of some of the early game due to these Neophytes from Ties, which are really powerful. But Bunny Hopper just took his time, kept control of the game, didn't let Ties have one of those Wind Fury boards uh, available with the Battlegrounds Battlemaster, and it paid off just about. <laughs> he did just about enough damage to get there. Really impressive uh, game. and. I guess this one really does highlight that the, the differences in these Demon Hunter builds because yes, the double chase pushed a ton of damage, but was there a potential burst outcome from Ilganoth? Well, who knows, but this definitely highlighted what um, uh, what Zai can do. Yeah, for sure the Ilganoth is possibly uh, going to be more burst, but it needs to be discounted or at least one of the combo pieces. Yeah. I think Bunny Hopper played to, or at least this list plays to a more consistent game plan where you can get um, burst more often, but it happens across two turns instead of one. And the fact that the Zai copied not only Jace, but another Fury was yeah, enormous. Huge. You pointed that out at the beginning because each Fury essentially doubled up itself. And then with the, 
uh, additional Jace. It's like four times the value. Right. And it really, Bunny Hopper needed every single point of damage to get there in the end because Tice was just healing out of range ever so slightly if he had a little bit more HP to work with. What a series. Was a pleasure to cast Raven. And even though it went 3 0, I think I definitely got my money's worth of this cast. <laughs> yeah, just dipping into the European Grandmasters and dipping 